The annual scientific meeting of the NHS Scotland Mental Health Research Network takes place on the 30th of October in Glasgow and people can attend in person, uh, sign up details below and they can attend online and follow the discussions remotely. So in the kind of run up to this, we've produced a series of podcasts to preview some of the content that will be discussed at the meeting. But please do check out the programme, which is very varied, and I'm sure there's something for everyone in there. So, so please do follow the hashtag and look out for the podcasts that appear in a run up to the event. So hello everyone, this is Douglas again at the Mental Health Controls, and I'm, uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm very happy to be joined this morning by Simon, who's going to tell us something about art psychotherapy, um, which is going to be one of the themes of the upcoming scientific meeting. Uh, Simon, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yeah, sure. Um, lovely to be with you. I'm uh, Simon Hackett. I'm an, I'm an art psychotherapist. I'm a, a consultant art psychotherapist working in the National Health Service. And I'm also a researcher at Newcastle University uh, looking at arts therapies, but other mental health research as well. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Simon. Well, thanks for taking a bit of time out today. I know you'll be busy with everything, especially this time of year. Uh, and you'll be coming along uh, on the 30th of October to talk in a, bit, in a bit more detail, but hopefully we can give people a bit of a preview, a bit of an insight into the sorts of things, because it's a, it's a fascinating area. The first thing I wanted to ask you was um, just how did you get into this as a field? Um, did you come at it from the art side or were you working as a therapist already? What, how did you get interested in it? Yeah, I I was I did a fine art degree. I sort of uh, I got really into art when I was at school and and creating art, but all sorts of forms of art, you know, theater as well as you know dance and 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 fine art. And I kind of got into to doing painting, and I, I went to college. And I suppose there were two things really that 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 raised my curiosity and sort of perhaps led me to to where I am now as working as an art therapist. One was that. Uh, making art in a studio with a bunch of other students and getting to know them, you kind of, you, you sort of got a sense of them as people and the stuff that they were interested in, but also their kind of background and what had happened. And so the way that they made art and the kind of stuff they made art about seemed to be quite closely related to them as people. So that got me really curious. And that's the same for me as well. So I was kind of interested in this relationship between how what people kind of create and express in themselves. And then the other bit was that that I, I quite like working with people. So uh, I, I wasn't sort of wanting to go off and, and do art on my own. Um, I was really interested in working with people. So those two things, that kind of curiosity about, about what people communicate through, through creativity and art, and also kind of working with people. So one of my first jobs was as a support worker with people with learning disabilities. And, um, and then eventually, I thought, well, how do I bring these two things together? You know, uh, and there was this thing called art therapy. So you could go off and, and do a training to, to, to do art therapy with people learning about, you know, mental health, um, about creative practices and, and looking to support people um, in whatever point in, in recovery they were. Mm, that's absolutely fascinating. And so you're very much kind of practical from seeing firsthand and experiencing firsthand the benefits. So there's definitely group elements as well as expressive elements that, that are involved here. And so, so what sort of distinguishes art psychotherapy then from art therapy? Yeah, well, the, the, the two things are really similar. So art therapy and art psychotherapy are really the same thing. So I, I guess, you know, in England, people go and train as of art, drama, music or dance movement therapists. So those are the sort of professions that people can go into and, and the practice that people can have. And it, and it's a two year sort of master's level training. So people are, you know, there's all sorts of parts of that training where they work with people, where they, uh, you know, they, they learn some theory and, and, you know, it's quite intensive actually. So, so that's part of it. And then uh, for people qualifying from those those courses they get a registration so they're registered with either the health and care professions council or or uk uh council for psychotherapy so so they're sort of accredited um and 
um, yeah, and then they, they go on to practice in all sorts of areas, you know, um, community groups in the National Health Service um, and just a, a wide variety uh, of ways that people can can uh, provide arts psychotherapies or arts therapies. Mm. Yeah, so I'd be interested to hear a little bit about your practice then. I mean, what's, what's, what kind of services do you run? What, what kinds of people do you work with who, who, who benefit from it? So I work in a, a really large mental health trust um, in, in England. It's, it's called uh, Cumbria, Northumberland, Tyne and Weir NHS Foundation Trust. And it actually runs coast to coast. So along the Scottish border, uh, right over in the northeast, right, right to the northwest. Um, and, it, the, you know, the arts therapies there, we have we have art, drama, music and dance movement therapists working in the trust and they can work with with people in the community who've got mental health problems or in children and young people services um, and a, a quite a wide range of of areas that you know people might access that that trust my own work is within something called secure care which is was was previously called forensic so the this is where people who have, have got a mental health problem or, or sometimes a learning disability and they've come through the criminal justice system or perhaps from prison um, and it, it's felt that they could benefit from being treated in hospital rather than perhaps prison um, and so I work with people in those settings um, and, and I've kind of been developing my, my research around that area as well. Well, that's absolutely fascinating. So is this the interpersonal arts psychotherapy that, that you'll, be, you'll be talking about? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I've been I've been working on the, uh, this, this thing called interpersonal arts psychotherapy. I, I did a PhD back in 2012. And, and so my initial research sort of led me in this direction from some of the findings of that, that early work. Um, and so that's developed into an approach. Um, I suppose that the essence of it is that, you know, there's something about that communication and expression. So we're helping people that might struggle with talking therapies or, or verbally explaining stuff. Um, but we find that when when there's a, a, an art making activity, there's something in that session it really helps people. Um, so sometimes, it, you know, what I find is that, that if we're looking at something somebody's created together, say a picture, um, and we can ask questions about the picture, and it sort of takes the pressure off asking them about themselves. Um, so there's a bit of a kind of safe distance around talking about stuff. And, and the other thing that, that seems to really help is that you've kind of got a record of, of of these pictures and images and art making throughout the, the therapy. So if I'm talking to somebody about something they've made, you know, a drawing or something, uh, it's funny how both of us really remember that conversation. Whereas if we didn't have something to look at, we might have forgotten some bits of those conversations. And the focus is, is, been a, is around helping people, the interpersonal bit is helping people around, I guess, reducing distress around the situations they're in uh, with other people um so so that's one of the things we're looking at is how people can can feel a little bit less distressed in, in the environments they're in and, and with with the situations that they have going on and their own personal backgrounds and using art as a way of um supporting that mm. But uh, I love the idea of the record keeping it of the kind of record keeping, and I can really see where you're saying in terms of it's almost like an accessibility barrier yeah. through language and through the kind of traditional therapeutic setup that maybe people might feel adversarial or they might, you know, find it difficult to engage. And this is a kind of neutral territory almost that where everyone's got a shared. Language. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think that access accessibility bit for art psychotherapies, we know we know that talking therapies work really well, you know, um, for lots of people, but some people, um, you know, for various reasons. So it might be that they've got communication problems and, and struggle with with talking that 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 limits their accessibility. And so using creative approaches can just help people in terms of their communication. But but also, you know, even people that can talk really well about lots of other stuff, 
could sometimes find it really hard to talk about their mental health. So, so actually having uh, stuff where we, we kind of jointly or, you know, there's an opportunity to, to create something and make something or, 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 you know, some people in music therapy, for example, you know, they find that really powerful as well, not just the visual arts. Um, they can, they can, there's a sort of curiosity about themselves as well, about what does that mean? what's what's interesting what do i like about that what do i find difficult about that and so actually those conversations around what you've created can actually lead on to uh discovering something that's really helpful for people mm. Mm. fascinating thank you thank you so much for that uh really really interesting picture um so it it seems to me that this is so you know kind of Without saying the, without trying to be too cliched about it, but there's certain types of engagement would be appropriate by for certain individuals. You know, some people would be more keen, as you say, to do music than they might to do dance or painting. Or uh, so, is this something that's very much you're working with the client to figure out what's the right approach for them? If if we can, sometimes those choices are not available. So often it's you know. So I, I'm I'm a uh, you know, if people come to see me, I do visual arts with them. That's what I'm trained to do. And we, they know that they're coming to do painting with me. But I do. There are therapists in, in you know, the NHS and certainly in my trust who do music therapy um, or dance movement therapy or drama therapy. So but but those things are not often because of the number of the therapists, they're not often available to everybody. So that choice isn't always there. Um, but yeah, certainly if, if people do have a preference um, and, and a kind of interest in working in a way, that can work really well. You know, obviously, if those things align um, and that their interest and curiosity and wanting to try stuff out aligns with, with, with that medium of expression and creativity, that can work really well. Mm. So I was wondering how your work with service users with members of the public and with other organizations that uh, have the sort of user perspective how, how that's influenced your thinking uh, over the years um, and is it you know is it is this a case that kind of in clinical terms and research terms we're catching up on what has been going on anyway or, or do you feel that this is a synergistic approach we've now got professions and patients working together yeah, it, it is a really mixed picture. I, I you know, uh, so I think you're right. You know, there is something that that we we all do as, you know, human beings that we can tap into creativity at different times. And I think the thing about arts therapies and when I'm introducing it to people is that you don't have to be what is traditionally thought of as good as art or whatever is perceived. It's not about that. You know, it's about a kind of. Uh, exploratory process it's about you know trying stuff out and uh, and it, and the kind of more about access and communication so so yeah i i, I think there's the art, arts therapies and and working with arts in, in the community arts or arts in mental health or arts in health there has been a really good uh kind of examples and progress around collaboration and you know shared learning and, and I, I think there is something about a kind of shared um what what some people might now call co-production or you know certainly collaborative work around that. so so i think that is there in the arts um uh, there's two things about this so one is that it's really informing our practice now. So a lot of the research I'm doing is with people who've got lived experience of mental health difficulties or learning disabilities and arts therapies or, or children and young people as well. So, um, uh, and so um, we're actually, uh, we, we've got a book that, that we're doing an international book on art therapy and each chapter is going to include examples of co-production and collaboration. And in some cases uh, the, you know, people that have worked with art therapists are also going to be co-authors of those chapters. So, you know, I think, I think there's a lot to talk about there. That's a really important thing. The, the other thing that's happening and I've been really excited about is that we're, the whole kind of public involvement movement in research um, has been really important. But what's been great is when we've used creative methods 
and creative approaches in our involvement with people. And it's really flipped the power balance. So, you know, that power balance of the sort of researcher expert, um, actually, if you can make involvement accessible and creative, it flips it the other way around. So I've, I've had a research group um, we, we, we got some funding to do some research with people with learning disabilities. And I had some, you know, really high powered people on my steering group that were professors and directors and, you know, all the big titles and people with learning disabilities with lived experience. They introduced all of the really great creative stuff. So they had these things called communicards where where you could hold them up to a screen uh, if it was an online meeting and it were pictures. You could ask a question or say if you were confused. They also introduced stuff like um, uh, jargon buzzers. So if anyone said anything, acronyms or, or whatever, then you could buzz. And, uh, you know, I was getting buzzed all the time. It, it was great. But in the end, what I suppose the point I'm trying to make is that in the end, everybody in that group, who, regardless of their background, took on board those kind of creative approaches. And it was a real leveler in terms of how we conducted our meetings. And those people with learning disabilities went on to design our our focus groups and the questions and lead those in a creative way as well. Um, so, so I think that's a really, really exciting area and, and one that I'm looking forward to seeing develop. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. It's all about doing research with people rather than on them, uh, uh, isn't it? And that's, that's a brilliant example. And another example of how arts can reduce the barriers, you know, make, yeah, make the, these discussions accessible and it's always a great reminder to be to learn how to express yourself more accessibly and there's always something to be learned isn't there um that that's great well really looking forward to hearing the rest of your talk simon at, at, Thank at, you. at the meeting and hearing a bit more about the research that's been going on and um, but I just wanted to thank you for your time this morning. That was a great little synopsis of the area. And uh, like I say, look forward to seeing you on the day. And uh, hopefully our faithful listeners can tune in and uh, find out more as well. Great. Thanks very much for having me. Really nice to be with you.